Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Welcome to Palm Sunday Worship with the Second Presbyterian Church community in Nashville on this fifth day of April. I'm Pastor Mary Louise McCullough, and this week we have recorded this service from our homes to honor Tennessee's stay-at-home request for our health and our safety. In our tradition, Palm Sunday marks a culmination of the ministry of Jesus. He entered Jerusalem along with thousands of people arriving for the Passover observance. Jesus' followers are said to have danced in the streets, but as they danced, the specter of his final days, his final hours was real. So it is that today we acknowledge the paradox of this moment in our lives we may wave our branches as this celebration reminds us of God's overflowing love, while also being mindful that Holy Week and the cross lie ahead. We are grateful for the participation of several members whom you will see in their homes, specifically Clee Lee, Sarah Brom, Oliver Gustafson, Blake and Huntley Rogers Vaughn, and Aaron Burcham. Our associate pastor, Nolan Heisinga, will deliver our meditation. After Nolan speaks, I invite you all to come to our virtual communion table together and enter the space of our most sacred meal, the Eucharist, our communion. I hope you've gathered your elements of bread and juice to serve each other wherever you are. If you need a moment to do that now, you'll have a chance as our musician Doug Murray opens this time of worship with a prelude. You can use anything, because you know, Jesus turned water into wine. Thank you for carving out this time in your life. Friends, let us quiet our minds and open our hearts to the graciousness of God with us in this hour. Please join me as we pray for God's love to transform us. Save us, we beseech you, O love. O love, we beg of you, give us success. This is our praise. Hosanna does not mean hooray, it means help. We offer no flattering words, but confess our dependence and confidence in you, O God. Our praise is our trust, our turning to you, the one who can save, none other, no less. That we throw ourselves into your arms, that we expect grace and mercy from you, this is our praise. From our sin and our sorrow, from our greed and our graves, rescue us, O Holy One.
Amen. Friends, the call of God is stronger than death. The word of God is breath itself. We have been called into life, raised from the dead, saved by the mercy of the living Christ. God seeks to set us free from all that binds our hearts. Divine grace gives us this breath, this light, this moment. Unbind us from what we fear, from what still traps us. Give us courage to be new people. We can thank God for helping us by sharing Christ's peace with each other in the world. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you all. Listen for the word of the Lord. Psalm 118, 1 through 2, and 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good, because God's faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it. God's faithful love lasts forever. Open the gates of righteousness for me so I can come in and give thanks to the Lord. This is the Lord's gate. Those who are righteous enter through it. I thank you because you answered me, because you were my saving help. The stone rejected by the builders is now the main foundation stone. This has happened because of the Lord. It is astounding in our sight. This is the day the Lord acted. We will rejoice and celebrate in it. 
Lord, please save us. Lord, please let us succeed. The one who enters in the Lord's name is blessed. We bless all of you from the Lord's house. The Lord is God. God has shined a light on us. So lead the festival offering with ropes all the way to the horns of the altar. You are my God, I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will lift you up high. Give thanks to the Lord because God is good, because his faithful love lasts forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. Let's listen for God's word for us today. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task. He said to them, Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. He sent them off right away. Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the donkey's offspring. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. Then he sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this? They asked. The crowds answered, It's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Good morning. I am going to read to you Xander's Panda Party by Linda Sue Park. Xander planned a panda party. Yes, a dandy whoop de doo But Xander was the only panda, just one panda at the zoo. Xander sat and chewed bamboo. He changed his plans and point of view. Xander planned a bear affair and thought of all the bears he knew. Black bear, brown bear, both the polars. Grizzly is a rock and roller. Koala is a little dozy, likes her tree, all leafy cozy. I will ask her anyway, surely she will want to play. Xander's party preparations took great pains and perspiration. The menu needs some taste sensations, plus the proper vegetation. Xander handed out the cards, calling all bears a celebration, invitation, food and fun and conversation. From her tree, Koala hollered, Xander, I am not a bear. Xander didn't understand her. Koala bear, you're not a bear? He stared at her in consternation. Sorry for the complication. I know I'm called koala bear, but I am not a bear. I swear, I'm a marsupial. Marsupials, we are rather rare. Will I not be welcome there? Xander fetched some more bamboo. He wasn't sure what he should do. He chewed a slew of new bamboo. He nibbled, gnawed, and thought things through. And he planned a hardy party. Fur or hair or hide can come. All the mammals, everyone. Calling all mammals a celebration invitation. 
food and fun and recreation. Soon Rhinoceros sent word. It may sound a bit absurd, but I won't come without my bird. Santa felt a little blue. He chewed bamboo a stalk or two. He fidgeted and paced the floor, then scratched and itched and paced some more. Finally, a firm decision. Xander's brand new party vision. All the birds and all the mammals from whooping cranes to hybrid camels, anyone with fur or feathers congregating all together. Calling all mammals and birds a celebration invitation, food and fun and jubilation. Xander, said the crocodile with a most beguiling smile, there's a party, so I've heard. You've invited all the birds. Birds and reptiles, long ago, we were related, don't you know? If you didn't, now you do. Can't the reptiles join in too? Xander didn't chew bamboo. Instead, he swithered in a stew. What to do? His worries grew. Was his party falling through? Then came a voice from down below, somewhere near his little toe. Why don't you ask everyone? I can help you. We'll have fun. Nice to meet you, Xander Panda. I'm Amanda Salamander. Amanda Salamander lent a hand to Xander Panda. Xander's party plans went from grand to even grander. Calling all creatures to a best of all festival. A celebration, invitation, total zoo participation. Almost time to start the party, then Amanda squeaked out. Wait, what's that coming through the gate? A truck, a ramp, a wooden crate? Xander didn't have a clue. He shook his head and wondered, who? Hello, hello, and how are you? Juzi here. Please call me Zhu. I'm Amanda. My name's Xander. Did you say your name is Zhu? No, not zoo. My name is Zhu, like saying zoo mixed up with shu. In Chinese, Zhu Zi means bamboo. And Xander knew just what to do. What a party, what a ball, lots of new friends, tall and small, every creature at the zoo, which means, of course, the humans, too. So Xander planned a party that didn't really go as expected. He thought it was just going to be small, and it grew and grew and grew. And today, on Palm Sunday, we is a, it's a celebration that we know what's going to happen. It's going to end almost as quickly as it began. But... Every year, we still come and we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus. So, even though it doesn't go quite as expected, it's still something that we continue to celebrate. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day of celebration and hope. Let us take this spirit of hope throughout the week. Amen. This is Jesus Moment. He's been a hardworking, traveling rabbi on the Palestinian gig circuit, playing synagogues and hillsides and town squares, sometimes people's homes. He challenges everyone to change their hearts and lives to prepare for God's kingdom, which is on its way. And he's gotten mixed reviews. He even got thrown out of town once for proclaiming God's jubilee for debtors and freedom for prisoners. The buzz has been building about Jesus' provocative preaching and his healing for hurting people. Now Jesus has his sight set on Jerusalem, the big city that will make or break him. Arriving at Jerusalem, Jesus creates a kind of holy performance art. You heard Aaron read us the story. Jesus sends two of his friends to go round up a donkey. Two animals, actually, a donkey and its colt. 
More donkeys means more fun, right? A donkey also makes people think of the prophet Zechariah, who pictured the Lord God riding on a donkey, returning to Zion, triumphant and humble. Humble because a donkey is a hardworking service animal. Triumphant because while everyone else is on foot, the king gets to ride in a parade. So Jesus enacts this image of humble, godly power. And the response as he enters Jerusalem is awesome. Crowds of people throw their cloaks on the ground to make an impromptu red carpet. They even break branches off the palm trees and spread them to make the path softer. And the shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! The whole city goes into upheaval. Who is this guy? And what's this talk of a Messiah King? Word gets around fast as each person, person shares this new phenomenon with others they encounter. On that Palm Sunday in Jerusalem, Jesus goes viral. His popularity numbers shoot through the roof. If he had a Twitter account or an Instagram feed, he'd have thousands of new followers on this one day alone. We all understand going viral, meaning that interest in a person or situation can spread rapidly, amplified through the immense network of human connection. We might rethink using that idiom after this coronavirus pandemic is over. But scientists and medical experts tell us that we're nowhere near the end of it yet. Public life is dangerous right now, and that can be really hard. Christian faith makes us ask, how will faithfulness overcome our fear in a pivotal moment such as this? We heard from a lot of you who really appreciated seeing the sanctuary in last week's worship video. Needing to stay home at this point is not easy for any of us. There's so much people are giving up, not getting to do. But this week, our youth director, Maggie, shared some incredibly wise words from one of our senior youth. That high school senior wrote, I'm feeling pretty okay. I miss my friends and I don't know when I can see them again, which is sad to think about, especially since there are only two months of school left. All the proms have been canceled, which sucks, but it's not the end of the world. I'm just trying to keep the attitude that everything getting postponed or canceled that I was looking forward to is saving lives, and that has been really helpful. Everything getting postponed or canceled is saving lives. What a faithful perspective in a dangerous time. Mr. Rogers often reminded us that we are all neighbors. As we shelter in place, maybe we can pay more attention to our closest neighbors. Standing in our yard this week, Amy and I learned that our neighbor Louie had just gotten back from his father's funeral. He told us about this event, which was as strange as these times are. A priest gathered only the immediate family and led a very simple service standing in the carport of the funeral home. Hearing that story let us get to know our neighbor a little and honor his grief. Last evening, I took a walk through our neighborhood. As I passed one house, I noticed a couple standing in the front room of their house, simply embracing. I didn't want to stare, so I turned away, and then when I looked back a few moments later, they were still hugging, and their faces looked sad. It was clearly a moment of tenderness, and it felt like a sign of the times. Other neighbors near us are gathering in adjoining backyards where they can keep a safe distance but still talk and laugh with each other. They can't share food, but stories and kindness can bridge the gap. We are all in this together. 
Then there are the people who are saving lives by not staying home, like all the medical staff and caregivers who walk into danger each day, sometimes directly caring for people infected with the virus and caring for millions of others trying to keep the rest of us healthy. Or like grocery store workers stocking food that we all need to survive. This week, those workers are also disinfecting every surface and keeping shoppers at a safe distance from each other. This global crisis can make us more attentive to people we too often take for granted, maybe even overlook. Mail carriers, cleaning staff, migrant farm workers. Kate Bowler is another wise woman a prophet for our time. I encourage you to look her up if you're not already familiar with her work. This week in one of her meditations on Lent, Kate said, what's important right now is all those who are suffering. It's all those who are exposed. It's all those who are on the front lines of caring for them. It's the way that we need to shelter all those who can't shelter themselves. Kate went on to say that this season of Lent helps us keep faith with those people. It is the time when we walk with Jesus and with everyone else whose lives are about to get worse. Because on Palm Sunday, Jesus' popularity peaks. The urban crowds celebrate him as a prophet and jubilation is in the air. But no one should put trust in approval ratings because crowds are fickle and ratings can plummet. Soon they will be deciding that Jesus is not the Messiah they were expecting, not the leader they were looking for. Soon Jesus will be lamenting over the city, calling it Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. But as disastrous as the upcoming week will be for him, Jesus shows us faithfulness that does not succumb to fear. He shares God's vision of saving lives, even paradoxically, if it means giving up his own. He does not shrink from confronting the powers of this world. Christ is king in the sense of being one who leads the church to march victoriously, nonviolently, and even foolishly into the center of politics, the center of public life, offering a different vision of God's world from what any Caesar, ancient or contemporary, has ever offered. So as you and I walk together forward into this dangerous Holy Week, take courage from a timely blessing that Kate Bowler offers us all. She says, if you are tired, bless you. If you are scared, bless you. If you have a little bit extra, bless you and give a little something to others. We will find hope, even though in the story of Christianity and the story of this country, it will get worse before it gets better. But we will hold each other in any way we can until we're through. Have a beautiful, terrible day, she says. In the name of all that is holy, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit.
friends, welcome to the joyful feast of the people of God. I'm here with my husband, Pastor Mike Wilson from the Downtown Presbyterian Church. Since we're sheltering together, we're going to commune with you together. So let's, let's do this. Many of us have hungered and thirsted for assurance of God's presence these past weeks. You may feel your faith is being tested. You may feel that God is absent as more people die, as many leaders stumble, as friends or family are quarantined, diagnosed, or hospitalized. You may be deeply, deeply tired or afraid. And yet we come once again to this table, this table where Christ has promised to be present with us in every time and perhaps most especially in times like this. You do not have to feel faithful to come to this table. Come with your sadness, come with your doubts, come with your determination, come with your frustrations, just anything. Come and be fed from a cup that was poured for us long ago, but which has nourished and fed us in our joy and in our sorrow ever since. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, how we long to gather around a table with our families and friends to eat and drink in community. We are reminded in these days of the easy intimacy of sharing a meal, breakfast with a beloved, lunch with a coworker, pausing to eat a quick dinner between the day's busyness and evening meetings, or the slow and careful preparations for a family feast. We long for the anticipation of guests arriving or presenting a token of gratitude to a generous host. Today we give thanks for this simple meal that has been prepared by Jesus carefully and with love, a meal in which Christ is our guest and our host. We pray for the powerful movement of the Holy Spirit who will transform whatever elements we have on hand, a wonderful variety of breads and beverages into the body and blood of Christ so that wherever we are and wherever and whatever we are eating and drinking, we would be eating one meal as one family. Even as our bodies are separated by distance, may we be joined together through and in Christ's body. How wonderful it is that we can do this one thing, O oh God, all of us together at the same time. And as the food we eat will become part of who we are, may we remember that we are part of each other, whether near or far, one church, one community, one family, joined together by our one Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus gathered with his friends to celebrate the Passover meal. And during the meal, Jesus did a new thing. He took bread, and after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he also took the cup, the cup which represents to us the way he poured out his life for us. And he said, drink this, all of it, in remembrance of me. And we are told that as often as we eat this bread and as often as we drink this cup, we proclaim his life, his death, his resurrection, his ministry of love, now and forevermore. And so we invite you to eat the elements, drink of them as you wish. We're going to serve each other and eat together. And perhaps you would want to eat as we eat and then drink as we drink. We'll be doing intinction. Mary Louise, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Michael, this is the body of Christ, broken for you. 
and the cup of salvation shed for you. We'll pause as you serve each other. Friends, let's pray. O oh, most wonderful Savior, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for being our host, our guest, our meal. And I pray that as this bread and this juice knits itself to our flesh and bones, we would truly become the body of Christ. Each of us individually and joined together as one people. So strengthen us this day. Bind us together. Surround us with your presence. And we ask this prayer in your most beautiful name, our friend, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are so glad to share this Palm Sunday worship with you. Thank you for being here. A big thank you to all the liturgists and musicians who recorded their videos at home and sent them in. And especially thanks to Jeff Davidson, who has edited all our pieces together into this finished product that you are seeing here. As this Holy Week continues, join us in remembering the last events of Jesus' life. Watch your email and the social media pages for Second Presbyterian. Each day you will find music offerings and contemplative invitations to deepen your spiritual life this week. On Maundy Thursday, we will release a set of virtual Stations of the Cross, artwork for each of 15 events in that last week of Jesus' life. We can't set up art in our building and have people walk it, as is our tradition. So instead, we've got the pieces of art offered to you visually, and you can page through them on that day and after. On Good Friday, the bleakest day of this week, look for music, compelling music, recorded on previous Good Fridays here at Second Presbyterian by our choir and instrumentalists. May that invite you into the bleakness and the sacrifice of that day in Jesus' life. And we will worship on Easter. We may all be in our individual homes, but we will celebrate Christ's resurrection as our hearts are bound by his love a week from today. Friends, if you do go out into God's world today, wear a mask and keep a safe distance from others. And while you are sheltering at home, be gentle with yourself and with those around you. And over all these things, put on love, which binds all together in perfect harmony. Friends, the grace of Christ attend you. The love of God surround you. The Holy Spirit keep you today, tomorrow, and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Mm -hmm.